Right now, I am holding a document which I freely downloaded from the internet, which states we cannot move or navigate along this river. That was news to me until I read that document, so I guess we better leave. But hold on, if we're leaving, then we've got to move or navigate along the river, which we're not allowed to do. Oh God, does that mean we're stuck here forever? Mm. Anyway, um, this video is sponsored by the lovely people at HelloFresh. More on that in a moment. Take a look at this map, it's quite staggering. This is the south of England and these are the main rivers. Everything you see in purple is not accessible to you or I. To stand in, to swim, to paddle, to canoe or boat or anything really. In fact, the only accessible ones seems to be the canals. And that makes me a bit sad because well, I spent my youth growing up in places just like this. In fact, I probably learned to swim in rivers like this. Something changed though, something's crept up on us. Something stinks. That will be the water companies dumping raw sewage in the rivers. Okay, so what's changed? Why are we talking about vanishing rivers? And what's the bigger issue here? Okay, so the UK has 42,000 miles of rivers. Now we only have access or undisputed access to 1,400 miles of those rivers. So you and I only have access to around 4%. Now this is sounding a bit like some of the land access videos we've already done. It certainly is. Now the government have suggested over the last decade or so that lobbying groups and canoeists and paddleboards and all those sort of people should simply negotiate access with landowners. Now to find out why that doesn't really work we need to get back in the water. But before we do we must say thank you to our sponsor this week which we're quite proud of because this is a product that we continue to use since we last spoke about them. Yep. Okay so we've got a little shop at the bottom of our road and notoriously we would go down every single day to buy the evening meals. We were ending up buying lots of other bits as well because you know you could you just walk past and went I'll have that I'll have that I'll have that. So we were spending a load of money that we didn't really need to and we we're probably wasting food too because we just bought a bit of this, bit of this, bit of this. Then came HelloFresh and it helped us sort out our shopping budget instantly just like that and also saved us a bunch of time with going down the shop every five minutes. So with HelloFresh you get a wide choice of meals to choose from and what's even better is you can choose meals to suit you and your family from your own home and also set up the deliveries to suit you too. And the best bit about this is once we started doing this we're eating a well balanced and sort of healthy meals it became an easy thing to do to be healthy another fantastic aspect to this is i'm not very good at cooking with HelloFresh, i can cook it's so easy they have these wonderful um ingredients cards they everything's measured perfectly for you and you simply follow these instructions through and i kind of realize actually all of a sudden i feel like i'm cooking and all your non-fresh ingredients come bagged with the number on that corresponds to the uh, the actual menu card so we're saving a bunch of money a bunch of time and we're having a balanced diet and varied diet as well now if you sign up to HelloFresh using our links in the doobly do below use the code whitewick60 you can get 60 percent off of your first order and you can get a further 25 percent off of your next eight boxes or, or you can use the qr code that's um here that's just been creeping up on us So the first important thing is nobody owns the actual water, not as one human being as such. However, the land underneath it, well that's a different story. So if you've got a landowner one side of the river and the other side of the river, well the boundary for their land gets to the halfway point down the middle of the river. So it's potentially owned by two different people. But what if negotiations don't work? That's a great point because in the last 10 years, only 50 miles per year has actually been negotiated. So if you want access to 44,000 miles of the UK's rivers, that's gonna take you 300 years. So there's a lot of campaign groups, lobby groups, people like the, the, the canoeists, the paddleboarders, and a lot of other social groups that see the benefit of access to these rivers. They see the, the physical benefit, the mental well-being benefit, and they try to use um, points from ancient laws. Okay, I think um, COVID really did drill that home as well. So 
What ancient laws? As far back as Roman times, any permanently flowing, non-tidal river was deemed public property. The Magna Carta, Clause 33, established free passage along England's rivers. A 1472 Act, well that set the way for general rights to navigations, so that ships and boats might have them their large and free passage. So I'm guessing this is where the document comes in. Indeed it does. It's quite a fascinating document because it's made by a law firm on behalf of their members who are uh, landowners who own the rivers and it tells them all about their riparian rights, their rights about the rivers. So why is the document bad then? What's what this sounds like it's a good idea. Well basically it's aimed at those uh, land owners and it's made out that you and I, the people visiting a river, are going to do everything to damage and cause untold mischief along the banks of those rivers. Many members are worried about damage. In the context of the commentary from canoeing groups and individuals, repeated trespass by individuals and non-motorised craft paddling along the river are key concerns. The whole notion in my opinion is this document makes it sound like if you're a landowner you're going to have problems and here's how to fix those problems in a legal frame. It creates a them and an us and not wants to really consider the fact that you and I might want to go out and enjoy areas like this and paddle in the river and, and do sort of recreational things that are good for our physical well-being, our mental well-being. In fact, wait, I tell a lie, it does. Page 13 of this document states right at the bottom here, we recognise that people will want to get out and enjoy the countryside, but... So that's just wrong really, isn't it? This whole document is just wrong. It's very divisive, mm. I believe. So it turns out July is Love Your River Month. So we thought it would be a good idea to meet up with our mate Headley, who knows this landscape very well, and walk along the Tess Way. Now the people at Right to Rome are encouraging people to discover your local rivers and um, all the fascinating things about it, the locations and the wildlife and all that sort of shizzle. So where are we starting this walk, Headley? So this is Gallows Down. Um, behind us is Coombe Gibbet. Um, and then behind that is Warbury Hill, which is the, I've got to get this right, the highest point in the southeast and south central England. It's lovely. Okay, so the test way is 44 miles long. We're not going to walk all of that for obvious reasons, but we're just going to try and pick up a few sites and do exactly what Rebecca said, which is go and see the river test and uh, try and enjoy a little bit of it and talk about some more of these issues. This could be one of the highest bits of chalk I'm wondering if it's in the world. Really? Actually. Um, wow. I need to look it up later, but I'm, I think that certainly in the south of England, this is the highest bit of chalk. Mm. And I would probably say, therefore, England. And I, I'm not sure whether that makes it the whole of Europe. To okay. Be with you, but I'll There'll be a thing later. across the bottom of the screen in a minute saying, yeah. nope, it was not. Or, it's, yes, he's right. <laughs> is Hedley right or wrong? Yes. <laughs> right, so we're going to go and find the bit of river that the Tess Way. Uh, first meets the test. Hold the camera Rebecca because I'm going to read out something for our viewers. Okay. Visit Hampshire website people says the test way is a 44 mile long distance walking route that we'll be able to take from the dramatic start high on the chalk downs of Inkpen. That's here. To follow much of the course of the river test. Excellent. Let's mm. go and do what that says. Okay. Mm. I recognise this village, Headley. Where, where have you brought us to on the Test Way? This is Whirlwall. This is the first time the Test Way actually connects with the River Test. Okay, so we've walked, we haven't walked at all, 20, <laughs> 26 miles to get to this point from Coombe Gibbet where we started the journey, 26 miles along the Test Way. Mm. So we're well over halfway because it's 44 miles in total. Yeah. Presumably now, we can carry on along the test way and sort of do what Jerome suggests. Explore the banks of the River Test. Mm. Was that, was that Not, not, okay. not really. Oh. No, sorry. It's a bit of a way yet. 
Right, Visit Hampshire clearly states that we should be enjoying the River Test. It's taken yes. us 26 miles to get to the River Test. We've only got another 18 miles to go down to Romsey, and you're saying we still can't enjoy the banks of the, the, river, banks test. Of the river Test. This is a bit silly, isn't it? <laughs> Not yet, I'm afraid. <laughs> So just sort of check out the other side of this bridge where the testway connects with the river test for the first time. And yes, right, it's, we now leave, leave the banks of the river test and we head almost perpendicular out towards the east. We can't walk along the test there. It looks like it is it for a good few miles. The map seems to show the same as well. Right, so I did go down the end of the bridge and the pathway does just head off perpendicular to the River Test, so huh, more bank problems we can't get to. Yeah, there, there is just one more thing though. Right, so we headed a little bit further down the Test Valley and we know we've still not come to the River Test in terms of a, a joining it and walking its banks as the Visit Hampshire website says we can do and right to Rome that say we should do, which is great. But you said there's another problem, Eddie. What's the other problem? Yeah, well, it's been fairly well publicised recently about uh, dumping of sewage, raw sewage in rivers. This is a chalk stream considered to be one of the rarest and most precious rivers in England. Yet for more than six months last year, untreated sewage was discharged into this river from the local treatment works. Um, yep. In fact, I think it was uh, May last year, 2022, BBC reporting there's 375,000 instances of it throughout England. That's staggering, isn't it? And, Absolutely staggering. And a couple of days ago, it was reported here at Fullerton as well. That's why we've come here to Fullerton then. Mm. It is shocking, isn't it, really? It's an incredibly sad story now, wherever you are in England. Beaches have been hit hard, especially with many beachgoers being advised simply to avoid swimming. A couple of scream grabs show the extent of the problem from the last couple of days before this edit. So what exactly can we do? What can you do? Right, so what can we do as individuals? It's really difficult. We're not big corporations. We're just free voices in this instance. So how can we help? Rebecca, any ideas? Well, you can join Right to Rome. Yep, because a lot of their um, campaigns are about rivers yeah. themselves. So that will certainly help. Mm -hmm. I think there's a hashtag they're using, which is Love Your River. Yep. Um, and which is Love Your River Month, don't forget, next month Ooh, in July. July, mm -hmm. yep. Um, right to your local MP. Right to your local MP. A good thing. Yeah, get involved. Tell us about your local river and what you're doing and how you can sort of get involved. Tell us about your area. Mm -hmm. um, right, from us free, thank you very much for watching. Me and Headley have a podcast. If you haven't already listened to that podcast, go listen. We'll put the link in the description below. Also, a final note, a big thanks to our sponsor in this video, HelloFresh, mm -hmm. for um, giving us the opportunity to show off their product. See you next time.